we began by jumping ahead by looking at pricing European call options within Excel you know using Monte Carlo and analytic methods but we jumped over lots of core concepts in going that route so here we're just going to cover some of the some of the stuff that we missed in particular etocalculus so the key point there is that the rules of stochastic calculus are, are different from regular calculus so for example if you had f of x is equal to x squared then you'd be used to df is equal to 2x dx but that's wrong when it comes to stochastic calculus remember from Taylor expansions we'd have f of x plus dx is equal to f of x plus df dx dx plus a half d squared f dx squared dx squared and so on and then we'd typically drop the higher order terms basically keeping the f of x and the df dx dx the first two terms what Ito did was to go well when we're dealing with Brownian motion dx squared is kind of like a dt remember when we were looking at Monte Carlo that I was saying that you know it converges like the square root of n so it's that kind of thing so he came up with f of x plus dx is equal to f of x plus df dx dx plus a half d squared f dx squared dt which is Ito's lemma he, he, he only came up with this in 1951 so it's quite recent maths you know normally when you're doing stuff you know, it's been done hundreds of years ago not so the case when you're talking about stochastic calculus so now if you have f of x is equal to x squared it goes to df is 2x dx plus a half times 2 times dt you can check that yourself so we have x squared goes to df dx which is 2x dx plus a half d squared f dx squared which is 2 dt and if you just tidy that up you get our result so we have our stochastic calculus so that's our first big concept that I wanted to get across next if we look at stochastic processes so say you have uh, dx is equal to something like this now we've seen this when we were looking at log normal processes before you know this would be our trend term and this would be our noise term this would be a Wiener process that kind of stuff what we can do now though is say well if we have a process something that is a function of a stochastic process then dg goes to this so we're able to extract what the process is given g 
we look at an example. So imagine our process was a share price, which we described as mu s dt plus sigma s dz. Again, we've looked at this kind of thing. Remember, we were looking at log normal processes. We also mentioned, we also looked at mean reversion and non-negative ones. So if we have F, which is the price of an option, for example, that's a function of S and T. Then, using our new Ito stuff, we're able to get an expression for the process describing, followed by the derivative of F. And you can kind of see, you know, so in when it, we were talking about x's, we had a coefficient of dt. When we we're talking about the share, a is mu s. So we had dg dx times a. Here we have df ds times a. So a is equal to mu s in this particular case. Here we have f, where we had g. Here we have S, where we had X. So these, these are equations 1 and 2. So that 1 is the process followed by the share price, 2 the process followed by the derivative. Now, if we have df ds shares and one option, then the noise terms cancel. So looking at this, if we have df ds shares, then the noise term is df ds times sigma s. While the noise term for df is exactly the same, df ds times sigma s dz. So, if you have minus one minus of one of these, then we're able to, to cancel them. That's the next step that we take, leading to the formula or the equation for the Black Scholes equation. So imagine that we have a share and we're short a call option. Well, in fact, that should be imagined that if we have DFDS shares as opposed to a share, you know, in order for the noise terms to cancel. So our portfolio is minus F, so we're short one derivative, plus we've got DFDS shares. Then the change, so that then delta pi is minus delta F and plus dfds times delta s since dfds is just the number of shares that we have quick aside remember that dfds is taken at a given point so you're hedged at that time and as if you were to look at that maybe later in the day dfds might have changed and so you have to dynamically readjust your portfolio to remain hedged but that's you know we, we've talked about that in other lessons and here we just want to focus on eta calculus and the process leading to the black Scholes equation so using one and two you know, we had our expressions for delta S and delta F. We just slot them in. So then we have delta pi is this. Now, the reason that we created this, you know, that we had minus F plus DFDS shares was to cancel the noise terms. 
So you can see this delta pi, when we work it out, we have minus dfds sigma s here, we have plus dfds sigma here. So these two terms cancel. The surprise, or the unexpected benefit, is when we look at these terms. We have df ds times mu s d delta t, while here we have minus df ds mu s delta t. So in fact, this term and this cancel as well. So we're actually only left with this. Now the next step. Since there's no noise or random term, remember we have we talked about the trend and the noise term, so the deterministic and the random term. So since in our portfolio there's no noise or random term, then this our portfolio is riskless during delta t during that at that time because remember we are dynamically hedging and so that